friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you are new, welcome to my kitchen. We are gonna be making five oven bake casseroles. I just spent all day in the kitchen processing over a hundred pounds of apples. That's what that is over there. And I need a very, very easy dinner tonight. So this first one is one my mother-in-law found. I have never made it. And I'm gonna adapt it a little bit from how the original recipe is written. I'm gonna adapt it to the way my mother-in-law makes it because it's really, really delicious. So we are going to be making chicken and rice in the oven. So I've got onions here that I already have diced up from the garden that I keep in the freezer. So I didn't even have to cut any onions. And I'm gonna put a few pats of butter on top of them. These are all gonna be fall, cozy, yummy dinners. And then I'm gonna take some garlic powder because I don't have the energy <laughs> to dice up any garlic right now. So we're gonna put that on the top. Now we're gonna get this in a 350 degree oven and we're gonna let the onions and butter and garlic cook in the oven. While that's cooking, we're gonna make the rub for our chicken. All the recipes we're gonna be making, I have never made before, so I'm excited. This is the only one I've had and it is absolutely delicious. So in this little bowl, we're gonna start with salt and pepper it just says salt and pepper to taste which we like a lot of both this is a quarter teaspoon and then onion powder garlic powder paprika this is a sweet paprika and last but not least thyme I'm gonna mix all this together. Now I have six chicken thighs here and I'm gonna go ahead and get them cleaned up. The original recipe calls for using chicken thighs with bone in. Josh prefers, and I do too to be honest, without bone. So I am using boneless, skinless. And the recipe in the note sections says how you can adapt this recipe if you want to use boneless skinless. And so that's what I'm doing today. I'm just going to cut off any excess fat so we don't bite into that. And what inspired me to do this was the fact that it's starting to feel a little bit like fall outside and just some nice cozy oven baked dinners are sounding really good to me. So I'm excited for all these recipes we're gonna be making this week. Now that my chicken is nice and cleaned up, we're gonna take our rub and we're gonna put it all over the chicken. I'm gonna use all of this rub so it's okay if I touch it. Whatever I don't end up putting on the chicken, I will season the rice with it. I'm gonna turn it over and season the other side. With the thyme in this, it already <laughs> smells like fall to me. It's wonderful. I had a lot of fun researching the recipes we're gonna be making this week. So obviously we're gonna make the chicken and rice, which we have going right now. We are gonna do an easy bolognese bake with gnocchi, which just screams fall to me. Gnocchi's just scream fall to me. And then we are gonna do a chicken and stuffing bake. Again, fall. We have a taco bake that we're gonna be making and chicken Parmesan. I don't know exactly what order we're gonna be making these in. I can timestamp them down below. What I'm probably gonna do is just ask Josh on his way to work, what do you want for dinner tonight? And that is what I'm gonna be making. I didn't ask him today. He doesn't know I'm making any of these recipes, but because I had a busy day, <laughs> I picked probably the easiest one out of all of these and him and I both know we really like this dinner. Our onions are cooked. So now we can go ahead and finish assembling this casserole. The next thing we're gonna add is one cup of a long, oh, one and a half cups of a long grain rice. And we're gonna cook the rice along with the chicken and everything else right in this dish. And then we're gonna pour over one and a half cups of chicken broth, just right onto the top. This is where my mother-in-law changes the recipe a little bit. Instead of using a cup and a half of water, she substitutes a cup and a half of white wine 
and it is so yummy. Let me make sure I do this correctly. Now I'm gonna just mix all this together gently and we're gonna sprinkle over the top our seasonings because our rice or our onions or anything haven't been seasoned yet. And I'm gonna mix that in. And we're gonna take our chicken thighs and we're gonna lay these right on top of the rice and onions. Now remember, this is hot. <laughs> I've been touching it and I forgot it was hot for a second. We are gonna cook this covered for 30 minutes and then we'll uncover it and we'll finish baking it uncovered for 20. But you wanna make sure you've sealed it really well because you don't want the moisture escaping so that the rice cooks properly. If you don't cook with wine, Follow the recipe as written and use water instead of the wine, or you could use a little extra chicken broth if you wanted. So the thing that I'm gonna make with this is some green beans from the garden, and that was how easy dinner was. That didn't even take me 10 minutes of my actual time because I already had the onions chopped. I was rereading the recipe, and I was supposed to put hot broth in here, and I just realized that. I think it'll be okay though. If I just need to cook it a little bit longer, I can. So it's been the 30 minutes, so I'm gonna take the lid off. It smells incredible in here. It smells almost like Thanksgiving with the thyme, the onion, and the garlic. I'm gonna put that aside. I have a pot of green beans here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get these going. This is not gonna be anything fancy, just garden fresh green beans with a little salt and pepper and maybe a dab or two of butter. It did take about a cup extra water than the recipe said, but it turned out fantastic. It was just a matter of keeping a close eye on it and adjusting as needed. That was at least my oven. I am gonna to top it with Parmesan cheese. The recipe does not call for this, but Josh and I like ourselves a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And here is dinner number one, a fantastic easy dinner after a busy day. I will see you next time we're in the kitchen. Friend, tonight for dinner we are making easy bolognese gnocchi bake. And the first thing we need to do is make the sauce. So in this cast iron, it's an enamel cast iron, I'm gonna go ahead and make the sauce, cook the gnocchis and do everything in here. The recipe is written to transfer it to a nine by 13 but I don't feel like dirtying another dish. So I just added some olive oil to my cast iron. To our oil, we're gonna add one pound of ground beef. The recipe is written to cook the carrots, celery, and onions first before you cook the ground beef. But I have found when I cook the vegetables first and then try to brown a ground meat of some sort, I have a harder time getting the color I want. So I went ahead and just switched the order. I'm gonna brown the beef and while that's starting to brown I'm going to dice up celery very 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 fine and then I shredded a carrot from the garden and I'm going to cut this up really fine. Both of these are from the garden and have very strong delicious flavor so I wanted to make sure I cut them up really really small because you don't want to really know they're in there. You want them to cook and kind of melt into the sauce so that's why I took the time to shred the carrot and then cut it a little bit smaller. Here you can see that beautiful brown color we achieved on the ground beef. So now I'm gonna take a paper towel and just kind of get any of the excess grease up. I do leave a little bit in there so that I can cook the carrots and celery in, the, in with the beef. I did season the beef with some salt and pepper and I also put some red pepper flake. Red pepper flake wasn't in the original recipe, but I'm really glad I did that because it added just a little bit of heat. But if you don't like spice, 
you can obviously leave that out. It's not in the original recipe. And then I have some frozen pre-diced onions from the garden and I'm gonna get those in there as well. So we're gonna let this cook for a good, you know, five, 10 minutes until the meat is nice and browned and fully cooked. The vegetables are soft and tender. Oh, here I'm adding the red pepper flake. I also added some garlic powder in there as well. And then once I have all of that cooked to my liking, I'm gonna add one jar of crushed tomatoes. These tomatoes are from the garden that I canned last year, and they actually have a little bit of extra onion and garlic in there as well. And then I have a can of diced tomatoes. I did these for the first time this year, and I've already gone through three jars. <laughs> I can't believe I've never canned diced tomatoes before. They have come in such handy. So I did take a little bit of the juice from the diced tomatoes because I wanted the juice in the final sauce and I poured it into the crushed tomato jar. I shook up, shook up the jar, poured that into the sauce just so that I got all of the tomato goodness out of both jars. Here I am making potato gnocchis on this day. That is a separate video. I can link that video down below. But I wanted to make those because I had some potatoes that needed to be used up but you can certainly use store-bought gnocchi. That is how the original recipe is written. So now that I've got my sauce that's been cooking away all day and my gnocchis cooking, we can pull this dinner together. This was so delicious. Our sauce has been simmering away for a while. It's rich, it's thick. We need to give this a taste test. Right now is the perfect time if I need to adjust the seasonings to adjust the seasonings. Now this is gonna be extremely hot. I have preheated the oven to 400 degrees. Oh, that's good. I'm glad I added the pepper flake. A little bit of heat. I don't need to add any sweetness. The carrots are adding the sweetness I want in the sauce. Now, I just made a whole bunch of homemade gnocchi. The recipe for this does not state if I should cook the gnocchis or not. I'm assuming because I'm using homemade gnocchis that are fresh, I should probably pre-cook them. But I think that if you were using store-bought ones, I don't think you're supposed to pre-cook them. So you can see how they've popped up to the surface here. That means that these gnocchis are done and I can go ahead and add them to my sauce. I've got a few more I need to cook, so I'm just gonna scoop them out this way. Plop them in there. I'm gonna stir my gnocchis into my sauce and then we've got one more ingredient we're gonna to top this with. Actually, it's two ingredients. Now we're gonna to top our bake with this delicious mixture of mozzarella and Parmesan. Because my oven's preheated, I can get this right into the oven. We're gonna bake this until the sauce is bubbly and the cheese is golden brown. Everything in here is already cooked. So we're just looking to get everything combined, the flavors bubbly and the cheese golden brown. This smells so good. Oh my goodness, yes, perfect. Look at that. Josh is upstairs finishing a project, so he's not quite ready to eat dinner yet, but I am gonna give this a taste test because this looks so good. Fall is in the air, and this just feels so fall-like to have a warm dinner coming out of the oven with cheese, and it's ooey and gooey, and I think going to be delicious. This will scald the roof of my mouth off. So I'm going to let this cool down, give it a taste test. Oh my goodness, friend. That bolognese sauce is the perfect balance of acid and sweet. I didn't add any sugar to that red sauce at all, but the carrots are 
from the garden and so they are extremely sweet carrots you can taste the savoriness of the celery you don't taste celery but you just kind of get that savoriness from it mm. the gnocchis are perfectly cooked they're not mushy they're not gummy they're pillowy and light mm. This is going to make a wonderful, a wonderful dinner and a wonderful lunch. Mm. I'm going to set that down because Josh is upstairs <laughs> finishing a project and this will stay piping, piping hot in this casserole until we eat dinner. It'll probably just be a half an hour or so, but because there's so much heat and it's in an enamel cast iron, I'm not worried about it not staying hot for dinner tonight. So. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next time we're in the kitchen. This next recipe I'm really looking forward to. It's chicken and stuffing. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the whole recipe in this pan. The recipe says to transfer it to another pan, but I'm gonna use a heat proof pan and I'm gonna adapt it just a little bit so I can use one less dish. So I'm gonna heat up some oil and we're gonna start with cooking our chicken. The recipe says to use pre-cooked chicken. So I need to go ahead and add a step and cook this chicken. So I just have two chicken breasts here that I'm gonna season with some salt and pepper. I also went out into the garden and harvested a little bit of celery and carrots and got those chopped up because we are gonna need to use those in just a minute. While our chicken is cooking, we need to make our stuffing mix. I have a box stuffing here this is gonna be the top of this casserole. And I had my coffee out in the garden this morning and it was so crisp and fresh smelling that that is why I wanted to make this recipe for dinner tonight. So to our water, I'm going to add a half a stick of butter and the recipe says to make this stuffing mix just as the recipe on the box says. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna bring the water and butter to a boil and then we'll add our stuffing mix on top. I'm just grabbing out some of the other ingredients we need, and it looks like our chicken is ready to be stirred a little bit. This recipe would be perfect for a rotisserie chicken if you had one or some leftover chicken that you had on hand. You could go ahead and skip the step of having to cook the chicken, but I didn't have any on hand, so I went ahead and got the chicken cooked. Now that our butter and water was boiling, I just poured my stuffing mix into the pot and I put the lid on and we're going to let that sit while we finish the rest of the ingredients. We need to make the sauce. So this is kind of like a chicken and dumpling or a chicken and a biscuit. You basically make like a chicken pot pie filling. The chicken's cooked, so I'm going to remove the chicken from the pan so we can saute the vegetables. And this is going to make the the white sauce that we need for this recipe. So I just added some butter to our pan and our onions. Those onions are frozen onions, and so they will release some moisture as they cook along with the celery and carrot. So I'll be able to scrape up the brown bits on the bottom of the pan. That's just delicious flavor. We wanna make sure we capture that. So the reason I put such a big knob of butter in here is because we need to make the white sauce and we need to make a roux. So this butter is going to be what is gonna help us make that roux once our vegetables are tender. So it takes a good five to eight minutes or so to get the celery and onions and carrots cooked to the texture we want. We do need to remember that they will cook in the oven because we're gonna put this casserole in the oven. Now that the vegetables are cooked properly. I added some flour. I cooked that for a minute or so and then I added some half and half and some chicken broth. And this is going to make the sauce that we need. To this we're going to add our seasonings, salt and pepper and some chicken, not chicken, what is that? Yeah, chick poultry seasoning, poultry seasoning. And then we've got some fresh nutmeg. Nutmeg might seem like a weird flavor to add to this, but trust me, it was so delicious. Once our sauce is thickened, we will go ahead and add our chicken back and we can finish this dinner. I wish you could smell it in here. It smells like the perfect fall dinner. I'm glad I added that little bit of poultry seasoning. 
that is creamy and rich and absolutely delicious. It doesn't need any more salt or pepper. So now, if you were to follow the recipe as written, you would take this Philly mixture poured into a casserole dish, but I'm just gonna bake it in the oven in this. But before we put it in the oven, we're gonna top it with our stuffing mix. So I cooked the stuffing just according to the directions. Once it came to a boil, I put the lid on it, I turned it off and I let the stuffing absorb the water and butter. And then I took the lid off so that it wouldn't continue to steam. And I'm just gonna layer this on the top. I think that this is gonna be absolutely phenomenal. I have the oven preheated to 375 degrees and I'm going to take our pan, put it in here and we're going to cook it for 20 to 30 ish minutes until it's super, super bubbly. The sauce is going to get a little bit thicker and the top is going to get browned and a little bit crusty. It's been about 30 minutes. Oh yeah, it looks done. This is going to be delicious. This was so easy too. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven off and I'm gonna dish some up and give it a try. Oh, it's perfect. It's creamy, but not soupy at all. Can you see how nice and creamy that looks? It's not soupy. The texture looks perfect. I wanna get a perfect bite here. It's gonna be very, very hot. It smells like a hug in here between the sage and the chicken, the onions, oh my goodness. Friend, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the most comforting things I have made in a while. We've been having a lot of things on the grill and a lot of summer salads, which have been delicious, but this just feels like a hug in a bowl and it feels like the perfect thing to enjoy on this day. I'm really excited to share this with Josh. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next time we make dinner. Friend, we have two more recipes in this series. We have a taco bake and chicken Parmesan, which I already know it's going to be delicious. The taco bake we're going to make right now is a Pioneer Woman recipe. It has all the flavors Josh and I enjoy, so I'm excited to give this a try. I'm going to make both of these recipes on the same day. I just put in my pan some oil, and now I'm going to get some ground beef cooking. Now, I'm going to make both of these on the same day because the taco bake is going to be for Josh and I, and the chicken parmesan is going to be for my sister. She is pregnant with her third in the first trimester and having some pretty serious morning sickness. She works full time outside the home and she has got two littles. And so I thought I am gonna go ahead and make her dinner tonight. So I texted her and I said, I have a taco bake that I could make you or chicken Parmesan. She chose chicken Parmesan. So let me go get my hands washed up and we'll add some more ingredients to our meat. The first thing I'm gonna make is Josh and I's dinner. While that's in the oven baking, I will make the chicken parmesan for my sister. This taco bake is so easy. In fact, I can go ahead and prep the chicken parmesan while this cooks. This taco bake comes together in a matter of minutes. So that was one pound of ground beef and salt and pepper. I'm gonna let that cook. While that's cooking, I'm gonna prep the chicken parmesan and the cheese for the taco bake. So I need mozzarella cheese and parmesan cheese for the chicken parmesan and cheddar cheese for the chicken bake. So I got that shredded and now I'm gonna make my dredge for the chicken Parmesan. In the first bowl on the right hand side, I have breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. And then in the bowl I'm working with now, we have flour, salt, and pepper. And then I have two eggs that I'm gonna to beat together and this is gonna be our dredge for when we pan fry our chicken for our chicken Parmesan. I will link these recipes down below just like I will link all the other recipes. So I let this chicken get nice and browned. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir and then stop touching it again and let it brown on the other side. 
Once I'm happy with the brownness of my taco meat, I'm gonna go ahead and take a paper towel again and use this to get any excess fat up and then I'll just go ahead and toss the towel. I now need to mix in some bell peppers and some poblano peppers. I already had those diced in the freezer from the garden, so I'm gonna get those in there from frozen and the onions from frozen as well. The recipe calls for fresh, but I didn't feel like chopping today, so I went ahead and used the ones that I already prepped. I'm also gonna drain one jar of black beans and one jar of diced tomatoes, and it says that I needed to rinse both of them, so I just put both of them into a strainer and I'm gonna get those rinsed so we can mix that into our bean mixture along with some frozen corn. The recipe said you could use canned corn, frozen corn is what I had, so that is what I'm using on this day. So this is how easy it is to bring this taco mixture together. We do need to season the taco mixture with some taco seasoning. I'm just gonna stir this and have the corn thaw and get the beans to warm through. I did add a little extra garlic I have freeze-dried cilantro. I'm gonna add that instead of fresh. Again, I was thinking easy. I didn't feel like chopping any cilantro. And then I added some taco seasoning. All you need to do is warm this through and mix it up and the taco bake filling is done. Well, that was super easy to throw together. <laughs> that only took a few minutes. It really helped that I had the pre-diced onions and peppers from the garden in my freezer. That's one reason I love to have pre-prepped like diced and things produce in my freezer because it just makes dishes like this so easy. And you can buy in the grocery store if you don't wanna, you know, dice your own peppers and onions for the freezer. You can buy pre-diced frozen peppers and onions. Now you wouldn't wanna eat them fresh, but in something like this, they cook up just beautifully. So now we need to take tortilla chips and lay it on the bottom. I feel like I should be putting some sort of sauce on the bottom first, but this is what it says to do. It does say to use round tortilla chips. I don't have round ones. I got these organic tortilla chips on clearance for 90 cents. So I'm just gonna use what I have on hand. So I have not round, but they'll be fine. Now we're gonna add half of our taco mixture. I've never used chips in a casserole like this before. I think it's gonna add a yummy texture. I'm excited to give this a try. It smells delicious. And you could get really creative with whatever you have on hand. You could make this probably with chicken, with no meat, and just add extra beans. You could do black beans and pinto beans. If you don't like tomatoes, leave the tomatoes out. So I put half the mixture down. Now I'm supposed to add half of our cheese. to crush them a little bit because I'm not going to get everything to fit in here. Now we're supposed to add the rest of the meat mixture. And we're going to top it with the remaining cheese. heated to 375. I'm going to pop this casserole in the oven and we're going to let that bake for about 25 to 30 minutes. While that's baking, we can start on our chicken parmesan. I did want to mention I tasted the filling to make sure that it didn't need any seasoning adjustments like extra salt or pepper or anything like that. It tastes fantastic. So I think this is going to be really good. So let's get on to our chicken parmesan. For the chicken parmesan, we're gonna use chicken breasts, and I have two pretty large chicken breasts here, and I need to cut them in half, and we're actually gonna flatten them a little bit. So I'm gonna cut them just all the way in half, and that's gonna give us four pretty decent sized servings, which will be plenty for my sister, her husband, and her two kiddos. And I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna put it back in this Ziploc bag that I had used earlier. And I'm gonna take a meat tenderizer and I'm just gonna flatten the thick end a little bit so that they're even thickness. 
I'm gonna put this in our flour. I'm gonna tenderize these ones. Now I have my station here that I already prepped earlier. We've got our flour, salt, and pepper. And I'm gonna keep one hand dry and this hand I will keep for the egg mixture just so that it doesn't get quite so messy. And then we've got our bread crumbs and our cheese. Oh, I already messed that up, <laughs> that's okay. Now I'm gonna put this onto this rack and we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes before we pan fry these. I'm just gonna repeat the process with the next three pieces of chicken we have. It has almost been 15 minutes since we breaded our chicken so we can go ahead and get it pan fried now. I have a skillet and we're not gonna totally cook the chicken through but we want to get the crust to be nice and brown and crispy. So it said about a half an inch of oil at the bottom. I'm gonna use avocado oil today, but you can use any neutral flavored oil you prefer to use that has a high smoke point. And I like avocado oil for this. Once this oil heats up, we will pan fry this chicken on each side. I think my oil is hot. I just put a little piece of breadcrumb in there to see if it would sizzle, and it is. I think it would have been better if I had used a finer grated Parmesan cheese. I just had a block in my refrigerator, so I grated it. But if you have a finer grated cheese, I think it's gonna do a little bit better for you. Now, I don't need to fully cook these chicken breasts through. I just wanna get a nice brown color. And so I'm gonna brown them on each side, put them into our casserole after trying to shake off as much of the oil as I can. And then we will finish cooking these in the oven after I have all four of the chicken breast pieces pan fried, browned up, and golden brown and delicious. Friend, this looks so good. I might have to make this for Josh and I later this week because this looks really good and I haven't made this in a long, long time. So now I've got a jar of homemade marinara sauce. This is a roasted, oh my goodness, marinara sauce, but you can use whatever your favorite store-bought marinara sauce is if you don't have a jar of home canned. And I'm gonna top each chicken breast with the marinara. The recipe said to only put two tablespoons. That's not enough. So I'm just gonna use this whole pint jar and that way there's some sauce for the pasta. I'm gonna put that on top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cover each one of these chicken breasts with the mozzarella cheese. This is a really yummy mozzarella cheese. I love it. It's got a great melting point and I did shred it myself. I think it melts better if it's shredded. I don't make this very often because it always seems like it's gonna take a ton of time, but that took hardly any time at all. So I should probably make that more. <laughs> I'm gonna bake that for about 15 minutes until the internal temperature of the chicken reaches 165. I think our dinner tonight is ready to get out of the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven off. This smells really good and it looks really good. Super simple, humble ingredients. Get this over here. And let's give this a try. I've got a bunch of toppings that we're gonna put on it for dinner tonight. To go with our taco bake, I've got some homemade pico de gallo from the garden, sour cream, hot sauce, and some pickled radishes. So Josh and I can kind of make up however we want, but let's try this. 
Josh is not home from work yet, so I'm just gonna take a little bit and give this a try. But what I think I'm gonna do is probably put some foil on it, stick it back in the oven just so that it stays nice and warm until Josh gets home. Now the chips are not gonna be super crunchy anymore. I've made something similar to this where I've made a taco filling almost exactly like this, but instead of using the chips, I used corn tortillas and kind of made like a lasagna, like a taco lasagna type bake. Mmm, that's good. It's hard to go wrong with those flavors. It's gonna be even better when I put a little sour cream and hot sauce on the top. This is really good. I would make this again. It's kind of one of those recipes that doesn't really need a recipe because it's just throw in whatever your favorite ingredients are, layer it. You could even layer it with flour tortillas instead of corn chips if that's what you had on hand. I'm just gonna stick this in the oven with the oven off so it stays nice and warm until dinner time. I'm gonna take, as soon as the chicken parmesan is done out of the oven, I'm gonna wrap that up in some foil I've got a box that I'm gonna put it in, and then I also have a box of pasta. So I'm going to package up the chicken parmesan, a box of spaghetti pasta, and then on my way to my sister's house to drop off the chicken parmesan, I'm gonna stop at the grocery store and pick up a bag salad so she doesn't even have to think about making a vegetable. She will have to boil up these noodles. I thought that it would be better to have fresh boiled noodles than for me to cook them and transport them. So that's why I'm not boiling the noodles. I did think about it, but I was trying to think of a better flavor. So the only thing she's gonna have to do is this. So I hope that she enjoys this dinner tonight. I will show you what the chicken Parmesan looks like coming out of the oven. I'm not gonna give it a taste test because I want them to be able to have the whole thing without a bite taken out of it. But I can already tell you chicken Parmesan is just a classic delicious meal. So I can link all these recipes down below. Probably our favorite one out of all of them, which kind of surprised me, it wasn't the one that I was thinking would be our absolute favorite, was the gnocchi bolognese bake. It was so good. Oh my goodness. Josh and I both absolutely adored that recipe and that will be a go-to recipe. The one I thought was gonna be my favorite was the chicken and stuffing, because I love stuffing. And that one was really, really good too. But out of all the recipes, the gnocchi bolognese bake was our favorite. So I will link all these recipes down in the description box for you. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I'm having so much fun experimenting with all these new recipes with you. And I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. If you enjoyed this five casserole recipe, you might enjoy a five crock pot recipe and a five instant pot recipe. So friend, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.